she says. How many people have been to she says event? No, she said it's okay. So we have some newcomers. For the people that don't know what she says is, it's basically like this. It's like we started meetups before the meetups. It's just an organization where we can kind of learn from each other, do a bit of networking, and it's kind of fun, non hierarchical. And if, one, if anybody wants to um, know a little bit more, we can go to the site. It's uh, we are she says dot com. And before we start, I just wanted to thank Aki from Moving Brands and the Moving Brands um, guys for letting us the space tonight. The topic is going to be <laughs> the topic is going to be high I think there's a couple of um, housekeeping that we need to do before, right? Yes, very importantly. Um, for just the housekeeping, uh, if you need to go to the restroom, there is a red post has a little cheese handle. There's a woman. There's a man. <laughs> <laughs> You need a key to get it in, and you have to please bring the keys back. So yeah, it's very important. And then you probably already found the drinks and stuff, but there are a lot of drinks are still in the fridge as well. And so help yourself. Thank you, Aki. And we're gonna keep this like really formal because the idea is for you guys to participate as well and talk to each other and talk to us. So um, we're gonna start with some questions to these guys. But if you want to ask questions as we go along, or you want to kind of participate in the conversation and just put your hand up and we'll do it this way. Cool? Um, okay, so I'm gonna let these guys introduce themselves, uh, but I also want, when you introduce yourselves, I want you to kind of talk about a little bit of like how, why you consider yourself a hybrid as well. So Mayo, you go first. I go first. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mayo's first. Can everybody hear everybody? That's good, right? Okay, good. All right, so talk as loud as you. Um, I, yes. I, <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Mayo, my name is Essen. Um, I work at Frog, 10 minutes down the road. Um, I'm a designer, design researcher, strategist type person, somewhere in that mix. Um, I've kind of taken a slightly winding path to whatever that is. Um, and I don't think I've ever really felt like I'm any one of those things. And whenever anyone asks me what I do, I always try to dodge the question. Um, <laughs> So maybe I'll leave it with that. We can talk about dodging the question. There might be some people in the audience that feel the same way, right? How about you, May? Um, hi, May. Uh, I work at Seagull Gala Branding Agency and I'm the Flat Iron. Um, I've been a graphic designer, art director in like my early on in my career, and then slowly kind of morph into doing uh, brand strategy and storytelling. And one of my friends always said that you know. You kind of feel a bit like an octopus where you'll have like all these different things you're doing and then you're not really defined by one thing. And I always find it really difficult to just tell people like, oh, well, this is what I do. Uh, it always has a much longer description of what it is and I, I'm the happiest when I'm doing multiple things. So it always feels like a difficult thing to define a brand. So I think that's kind of where the hybrid comes in. Yeah. How about you, Aki? See, um, so people think about this, you know, actually what I do, like, you know, who I am, I'm actually Japanese, I was born in Tokyo, but just to the end of this year, this is my 20th year living in America, so it's almost half my life I've been outside of me in America, so I kind of think about it, I'm not necessarily American, but I'm not necessarily super Japanese either in a weird way, so it's a little bit that kind of hybrid of different culture, uh, the different background, language, that kind of half mixed up uh, <laughs> to use. So, and on top of that, I studied um, more environmental design, but ended up in the branding business. I'm a city with moving brands. Um, so now in my position, I work with very cross-functional teams. So we have like, filmmakers, animators, um, the 3D designers, architects, graphic designers, you know, all different types of people that I work with. And then, ended up kind of creating something very really interesting things in the end, even though that ended up a part of the form of a brand or could be experience. So it's in a way my job is now becoming, it's really hard to define what that is. That's quite like a hybrid going on. So that's kind of who I am today. Yeah. So, so for the sake of this, because you know, if you read about Silicon Valley, that definition of hybrid is very different from what we might be talking about today. I wanted to kind of start with May. Like, what do you think is a hybrid for within the kind of context that we're discussing today? Yeah, I think I think the definition is definitely open for interpretation. But I think hybridity itself is 
is because things are changing so much quicker, problems are so much more complex that you know solving like a, either a business problem or a social problem is not just like you know a designer's job or it's just the you know an MBA person's job or a management consultant's job. It's like a lot of different people and disciplines and cultures uh, put together and you put this kind of interesting and unexpected combination together and then you get a result that's so much better than if you just have a room of the same people thinking about the same challenge. So I think that's kind of where hybridity comes in is really deliberately putting very interesting unexpected combinations together. Right, so, so it's not just a skill set hybrid, it could be a cultural thing as well, right? It could be like different cultures. So, it's, so is it like the T-shaped form, or is it more like a, you know, two columns, like an H-shaped form? Is, like, is it like, <laughs> is it like, a, is it like being great at two things, being equally great at two things, or or different than that? What do you think, Maya? I think it's actually a lot less about the skills. There's definitely a piece of what you're good at. I think a lot of it is about what you. It's kind of an identity piece to it of what you feel, hey, what do you do? I'm X, great. Like that works for some people. Um, and I think there's something of fitting an association with a, a discipline or a, uh, a background and feeling that kind of encapsulates who you are um, or not. And I think it's something that I've, I've certainly played, I've never really felt comfortable with one. Um, I think sometimes it can be two, sometimes it can be three, sometimes it can be a bubble of things. Mm -hmm. um, as long as they kind of relate and they make sense in your head and you feel like, oh yeah, I'm one of those people who does that stuff. Mm -hmm. Even if that's not a category that HR knows what that is, or right. LinkedIn knows what that is, or like that's all that to one side. Um, as long as it makes sense, I think it's more about that. Do you feel culturally a hybrid, Aki? I do in a way. I mean, it's kind of weird. I, when I live in, um, in America, I feel more Japanese in a way, but if you go to Japan, I feel suddenly I'm not Japanese. It's very like, it depends on where you are and who you are interact with. So, I don't know, it's more like, I think it's not chameleon, but it's a little bit more mixed, rather than really clear this way or that way. You know, I like that you know, you said about the you know, octopus or yeah. maybe something just more flexible or organic. Yeah, and I think there's like a certain kind of ambiguity in not having a very defined definition of what you do and who you are, and I think also it works for teams as well, so the team itself is like a hybrid of people, or like the approach itself as well, so it's not only about like a, a personal definition, it opens up to, you know, things are a little bit bigger as well, so maybe right. that the, the team has these kind of verticals and they all have something in common. Mm, that's interesting, I wanna get back to that, but first I wanna open to you guys. Who here feels like they are a hybrid? Can I see show of hands? Wow, quite a lot of you. Kind of a self-selecting group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who here feels that they're not a hybrid? So every, yeah. So you'd be like, I'm this. <laughs> you know, more, mine's more just like the personal, you know, mother, work, you know, creative director hybrid. Uh huh. But there's very separate, like they don't really, I don't know. Yeah, they don't yeah. really play together. No, unless it's just my mother, the instinct to like take care of people. Or right. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Cool. And who here feels confused? Why are you So hopefully, we're going to do an exercise that by the end of this, this is, you know, maybe kind of clarify a few things. And the guys that like get a little bit more, I don't know, I don't know if I go, should go this way, this, just ask questions and then we'll keep this quiet kind of conversational. So, um, to, go, um, what, to go back to like the kind of hybrid, can you guys talk a little bit about like the positives and actually the negatives of, of being a hybrid? Because you actually mentioned something already, Maya, like HR doesn't understand it. That could be a market <laughs> right? Yeah. Quite a big one if you apply for a job and you have to be put into a silo. So uh, so maybe, why, how about we start with the positives and then we go to the negatives. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to start, Ashley? Sure, yeah. I mean, I think positives, uh, I think it's like a chemistry. If you put the right things together, even either within your capability or other different people put the team together, 
sometimes just you know, just spark something that you never expected. It could be quite lovely surprise and you know things that you never thought were going to happen if you just focus on one thing. So that could be you know quite positive thing. So most of the time I kind of see more positive outcome that maybe can hold on to that. Yeah. Part, really. How about negatives? Oh, uh, should I say something? Yeah. Well, the conversation we are having with my uh, other coworkers and stuff, but because everyone's time is limited, but even only have 24 hours, and so once you started doing a lot of different things. Ended up each of the time it take you getting a shadow on and less time. So if you focus on one thing, you can maybe go to really deep and mastering things. So mm -hmm. sort of ended up you want to be generous and so you can touch everything but none of them are great. Or you ended up one thing but it's amazing, but maybe you are limiting yourself one thing. I don't know, so those are struggles that I hear and, and I can kind of say I like doing a lot of things personally, so I don't really struggle too much about mastery part, but I can kind of see, you know, do you want to be master on one thing? But, you know, how do you invite your time and, mm -hmm. you know, balancing things? That's how about you guys? Do you see this kind of, you know, let's start with the negative. Just yeah. to kind of confuse <laughs> I like, everybody. I have like another <laughs> metaphor. It's like if you have like a, a color palette or watercolor, if you just put random colors together, it always turn out brown. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always turned out like muddy and like not beautiful. But then if you deliberately put like certain colors together, then you you can create a beautiful picture. And so there's a danger of like randomly throwing things into one pot or into one team. Then it, it creates chaos, right? There isn't um, there really isn't you know roles or responsibilities and and really facilitated collaboration and having just you know using hybridity just for the sake of it sometimes can be counterproductive. And then I think the time thing is also interesting. It's like, you know, our work is so fast, like the, uh, the pace is so fast. It's like, can we afford the time to explore these different things and come up with this amazing solution? Like, is there something that, you know, counterproductive about it sometimes? Uh, I would feel worried a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and do you have time to encourage that type of work in, in, the, in the context that we, we live in right now? Mm -hmm. So, so do you think it's more about, because I, I think the color metaphor is really interesting, do you think it's more about being really certain about what your colors are and focusing on those rather than trying to do everything? Would you say that? I think it's about knowing yourself really well, uh, which is difficult <laughs> because I think we'll have confused times. And the other thing is also explaining to people what you're good at doing. I think that part is difficult. Like, how are you? useful for a team when you're really good at, you know, art directing, but you can also, you know, map out super complicated information, like, because not everybody knows you, and the whole <coughs> team knows you, and so sometimes people get underutilized, or, so being able to articulate that is super difficult. Yeah. Maya, you said you, you find it difficult too, right? <laughs> so how do you, how do you do that, and, and kind of what are the positives and negatives outcomes? I, mean, I think so. I'm going to skip over the bit of getting a job um, a little bit because you kind of have to pick a silo to start with. Um, you think? At least I found, it, I found it an easier way to convince people to hire me is to pick one and then start out from there. We were just um, thinking about this <laughs> right there, right? Yeah, but like, we're like, if you're starting, just pick one. Yeah. Um, because the world doesn't kind of understand and it's more yeah. difficult to explain. And I think there's often the difference between the things that make you interesting is the hybridity. But often, if someone's looking to hire someone, they've got a problem to solve or a need to address, and they need someone to do a thing. That's kind of very pragmatic. But I think kind of once you're in a place, almost regardless of it, there's something really interesting about covering different <coughs> different buckets or having kind of abilities that fit outside of a box, um, in that they let you help other people who maybe work deeper in one translate across them. Um, and also on like a really tactical level, it's really useful sometimes to be like, oh yeah, I can do that. Sure, let me help you with that. Oh, you need help? Sure. Um, and so you can kind of jump around. It takes a little while to move that from, yes, I can do bits and pieces, to like, yeah, there's a combination of things that are valuable. And I think your watercolor example works really well, is that, yes, I have some blue, and yes, I have some green, but actually there's kind of a bluish-greenish thing going on, which is a little different from like neat little um, pieces. Um, but I think there's something, actually kind of, the thing I think is most difficult 
is convincing someone that the bluish greenish thing is in itself animal, maybe more than the blue and the green, um, and that you need to be able to prove that, that you have enough skill in the blue, enough skill in the green, that, that there's also something in between that's useful mm -hmm. in like a very, very straightforward way of like a company can make money from you doing it or society gains value from you doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but that proof is really hard. Mm -hmm. it's, it can be easier starting with one, but having to convince people that's okay and that you're not just flailing around blindly, um, I think is probably the biggest, the biggest challenge. And defending that that's a good thing. Because uh -huh. I've been, not the only person who's been told, like, just pick one and get good at it. Right? Like, just stop doing all these different things, figure out what you want to be, and just go be that thing. And being like, actually, that's a good advice, I hear you, but I want to try this other in between thing. Um, that takes a lot of certainty to fight with that. Yeah, sorry. Would you say as well that kind of uh, in the intermediate stage, not necessarily the beginning stages, but to continue more with the color metaphor here, uh, <laughs> going into a team and being able to say, you know, I don't just have blue, I also have some green, and then like getting the opportunity to say, this is the green that I have, show it, etc., and get to work that in. How, how have you kind of worked towards overcoming those obstacles, or have you seen a lot of those obstacles in terms of moving through the careers? <laughs> There's definitely been some. Uh, I think it, the key difference there is whether someone else already has green covered. Um, that's, that's kind of like it's a, easier if they don't. If someone else already has green, there's like a helping out thing, but there's also a stepping on toes that happens, um, and that's delicate. Um, and I think there's a shift that happens from like stepping on someone's toes to being like, oh. I just got that, don't worry, it's taken care of. Like we can use our resources differently and set up the team differently. But that takes that takes some toes being accidentally stepped on. Um, or just kind of, oh, it turned out it was useful, I could do that thing that no one knew. Um, yeah. Yeah. I also realize that things just takes a lot longer than I think <laughs> to like communicate it. And I'd be like, I'm so impatient, I just want to get it right now. And I think, you know, that's usually like my, I think my shortcoming very impatient, and so I don't realize that, well, it takes time to articulate, it takes time to sharpen all your knives, it takes time to find the right projects to come by, you know, and then there's also like meeting the right people, being the right places where it's being, you know, facilitated, or you become the person who facilitates it. So Aki, have you ever hired someone as blue, and then they came to you and said, I want to do green? What is usually your approach to it, and how does that work? Yeah. Or both? <laughs>
in the end, I think everyone will benefit as long as you know, put that right energy into the right place rather than get, I don't know. I feel like you, need, you need just enough to be useful. <laughs> uh, in order for you to, even if it's not like take on a thing, to help out or to be an extra pair of hands, and that allows you to like get on that ladder and move up, um, and get those, have the opportunities to be in places where you can then build the skills to then need more opportunities. But you need that like first little piece, and sometimes that's stubbornness and failing a couple of times, and sometimes that's going and doing things and coming in, hey, I learned a skill. Maybe someone needs it, um, but I think it's you almost need that little leg up, and then, and then a lot of good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so so he sounds promising. <laughs> <laughs> director CCO just to mention one example but the new kind of literature and like future of work says that the, the function is more like a lattice pie where you can go this route up or this route up so you can take multiple routes up so any other I you know any other um, principles or like or, or cultural things that a, a space should have to allow hybrids to thrive because for the people that don't have it, then they maybe can start thinking about other spaces and all actually, if they love where they are, kind of maybe see if there's possible to instill some of that in there. I mean, I am in a place where it's not a great place for hybrids, but I'm there to shop in one of my knives. So that's a purpose why I'm there. But I also have this theory that I'm not so sure is true, that I think everyone is a closeted hybrid in some ways. <laughs> They just haven't found themselves, they haven't been in a place where there are people who are open to it. So being an optimist at work, I usually would, um, 
I think the workplace itself is siloed, but I think there are pockets of people, and I think a lot of times when working as hybrid is really about building relationships, and once you have built a relationship, then you, you're stepping on your toes for them turn into collaboration. So that is how I try to like unlock people, and you kind of have to do it one by one, and then there are certain people like, oh, just stay away from me, which then you can just take the cue and be like, well, there are so many people you work with, there are certain people who are, who are your allies, and people who are excited, and then there are people who are like, just this is not for me, which is also fine. And I think, you know, we can't make everyone hybrids, or else the world would be, you know, this one tone. And I think there, there's need for people to be really, and really thankful that people are really, really good at this one thing at work. And I'm really grateful for having them there as well. So I think being able to be open-minded about um, <clears throat> building relationships and then unlocking people's desires to collaborate is mm -hmm. kind of my way of, of approaching it. Yeah. yeah. I always feel like there isn't a perfect place, but I, mm. and I think every every company has a variety of perspectives and a variety of cultures, and every individual in a company thinks about things slightly differently. And you just kind of need to find the people who think that whatever it is you do is useful or interesting. And so kind of find like a mecena, like a mentor to kind of yeah, find a mentor, or find allies, or find mm -hmm. people who can what occasionally you give you a nod, but actually you're not being ridiculous. Because um, there is there is kind of that questioning process of like, oh, maybe I should just pick one. But as soon as you start hearing that, oh, okay, like other people have done this and it's worked out for them, they move either hierarchically up through the organization, it's kind of the classic way, but even just they're still there and they're still appreciated. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's really valuable. And I think knowing that it's okay, it's okay for there to be specialists and important mm -hmm. specialists, but also it's okay that there are people who don't always see the value of hybrids, as long as that's not everybody, as long as that's not the overriding view on it. Yeah. So. Do, you, do you think I was kind of thinking, sorry, I'm not yeah. going to directly answer this, but is it generation thing or is where they coming from? Because I was chatting the other day and started thinking, I've been around for a while, so probably people doesn't know, maybe doesn't know this, but I was designing before computer. So there's a job called typesetters who actually <laughs> set the type. That's all the person that does that before computer, before Mac, before. So before technology came into this design world, there's a lot of people that's like one thing, right? Because mm -hmm. maybe two was limited, you couldn't really explore too much. Everything takes a while. So you know, back then also they're quite siloed as well, and then they also titled as like a graphic designer, industrial designer. It's very kind of clear. And I think that system still exists at the school level, unfortunately. Yeah. But, you know, but now because computer, everyone can do a lot of things by yourself, and you can also explore really quickly. I wonder people getting more and more that finding other things, trying things, learning really quickly, so becoming a little more easy to be hybrid. But certain generation maybe didn't go through that. Yet, and I wonder if stuck into the world. I'm just kind of saying, because I've been seeing, I'm kind of in the edge of maybe a little bit of an old school side, so just kind of wondering if it's going out here. I think it's easier. Yeah. I work for that. I worked for Sandy Bank for 13 years, and I was pretty much behind that, but I was able to do that because I have a lot of in different kinds of interests. I did internal um, communi communication, but I also did the manpower review. I also did I <coughs> did a lot of different things. I came up with a motivation plan for the staff. For me, that was much more interesting. But it was because, and it was very rare that you do this kind of thing in a bank. My, my division was in a group to the left. Mm -hmm. But I think that it depends on the individual. And it depends on the relationship you have with your boss and his boss. And I think you had a comment as well from the beginning, so yeah, I'm conscious um, of that. I was just saying that it's easier to do multiple roles when you're in a smaller team, um, regardless of wherever you are. Especially if you're working in a company that moves very quickly, there will always be times when other people are a little bit stressed out and have too much on their plate. And I've found that those are the opportunities where it's even if you're going up, up and beyond and working crazy hours, like that's when you can you can help someone out that might appreciate it, and then you can also use your skills that you don't normally in your typical role. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so some interesting things coming up 
here, like if you, the, the, the spaces that are allowed for hybrids are usually like kind of smaller spaces where you get to have loads of fingers in different pies. It's kind of a, a mindset as well, whether it's generational or not. And finding your allies is another space for those that want to let the hybrid out, what they could do to let the hybrid out. And I think someone wanted to, yeah. Yeah, um, your point about generational I think is really interesting. That that's what I was thinking when we were talking to you. Now hybrids are like a big part of the design world. But I think too, another facet of that is the design now. There's so many people that know so much more about design than we used to. And it's important for us as designers to kind of be able to articulate the value, but also I think clients want more than just a design solution. They want to understand how it fits within whatever they do. And in my like my role, I'm a designer, but I'm also a writer, and so I'm kind of telling the design story. But it's like you need more than just that design skill set or that like strategy skill set. Like you have to be able to articulate it in a really clear and concise way. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it could be a generational thing of. Not so much of how people are, but really about how the system remains set up. As you say, mm -hmm. like the school system, I guess it depends on where you grew up. I think like I grew up in Hong Kong, so it was very much like you pick this and you never go back. Mm -hmm. And so that was never a great environment for me. <laughs> but but at the same time, like I think the, uh, that's kind of how things were set up. But I think now because you know the access of learning things online and learning things mm -hmm. from you know you can learn things from a very short period of time that enable people to that and I think that those opportunities were less you know a long time ago because of technology or because of you know things are not available at the time and I think that's why we're coming out with more of these kind of uh, hybrid we have tons of interest and this like slash generation and I think that's I think that's definitely partly generational. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. I think I think it's funny because I think the, the slippery slope when I say this because I work in an industry that is very dependent on hybrids and like so much so that every single person, I work in the nonprofit industry, so every single person is required to wear 10 different hats. It doesn't mean that the product is going to be good. Like, it doesn't, at the end of the day, what you're putting out there has to be really good. Like, your yeah. design work and what you're doing, all these things we're looking at around here, I, it has to be great because, and for us, I think it's really hard because you're not getting the best graphic designer on staff necessarily. I'm teaching myself on the side how to do it so that I can get the invite out on time for the event that we're doing. And I think there's that that right. slippery slope of where is that line that you cross where you want your staff to be empowered and educated and go out and try these new things and explore these new horizons and communicate that. I think to your question before is communicating with your boss and your peers, hey I'm kind of curious about what you do. Can I sit in on a meeting? I, I don't want to impose but can I sit in on it and learn about it? But I think that slippery slope is where does that line cross where your product starts to suffer. Right. And then I think it's the difference is passion, right? Whether you're doing that, when you're learning graphic design to do that, invite because you're yeah. passionate about it or because there's no one else to do it, right. which is a different thing, right. yeah. you know? And I think kind of what we're kind of talking about here is that the, 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 the good hybrid will do something because they are really passionate about it and not because there is no one else to do it or, you know, or the other, I don't think the other person is doing it right, <laughs> right. you know, so we, we just, I think yeah. the, the difference that we're talking about is a little bit about like the true passion that's something from within that it might not even be perhaps in the same industry. Like you might be, like I personally almost did chemical engineering, imagine, because I love chemistry so much. Uh, mm -hmm. But then kind of went to creative industries and kind of, and even when we, and everybody had, does anybody have an experience when the hybridity of it is like so apart? Yeah. <laughs> That you don't, you know, like you're literally <laughs> confused. I, I was going to make that question because we are talking about hybridity almost like a di Venn diagram, you know, like a, for the H shape. <laughs> you have this, you have that, but there is some kind of connection. What happened when these two things become like poles, like who you are and that now? Make you escape, schizophrenic in some way. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very reliable and it's not very. From yeah. a point yeah. when you are going to a job interview, you know, like, okay, at least but I answer that. But that used to be clearly two very different skill sets. And, and I think there is always this idea about your left brain and your right brain. And these kind of things that are always making you to make a decision about something and one path, and just to have that other thing, like a side. 
describe it as like my passion. That's not true. Mm. I, I am both dreams and I cannot decide what to be. So it's, it's, it's something that is kind of painful when you get older. <laughs> <laughs> something from the completely different schizophrenic world. Yeah, and I understand also, yeah, yeah, and I understand also the context one, you know, yeah, like yeah. here I will, you know, um, dial up this aspect of mine, mm -hmm. or in this other yeah. context I will dial up this mm -hmm. other, etc. But there are moments in your life when you have kind of, you are forced, maybe in your transitions, mm -hmm. and in, you know, there are those moments uh, where you have to really make because I stick on the ground yeah. a little more about what you are and what you have to offer. Mm -hmm. uh, that is not as flexible, it's not as yeah. uh, you know, fluid, yeah. as contextual, big as it is. And these are moments uh, that force you to kind of a definition that yeah. this is, is kind of more moments. difficult to solve. Those are also moments when you're forced to tell strangely existential stories about yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to somehow make it all seem like it makes tell me, sense. Tell me something about yourself. Right. It has to be coherent. Right. <laughs> and it's, you have to make it seem like it was all on purpose. We should at least try. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As a manager, 
is, 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 is uh, managerial skills, um, they are hybrids themselves, or do you think that, you, you, do you feel more comfortable with certain areas, or do you think you can, you sh you're not quite able to talk as great on one area, for example, graphic design, than another area like the film? You know, do you feel that tension when you're a manager? I mean, I think there are areas that touch. I mean, in in the uh, course of my you know the past, I touched quite a lot of different areas where I worked. Um, so I kind of know various areas, not maybe something but deep, but enough to kind of understand who has actually great skills or you know the great things come out of it. So my job now is kind of putting the right people together in the team and then make sure that it all works together and a great kind of chemistry happens. So in a way, um, knowing lots of different things really helping me to make the work as a manager, but not necessarily I'm you know, great for every single area. I have a couple places that I spend more time and uh, experience that I can say, but not all of them, but just enough so that I can just orchestrate Right. Um, so, 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 do you guys think that when you move up, you're less of a hybrid and more of an orchestrator in that sense? Yeah, it feels like I am a little bit becoming that side rather than more about my skill itself. I think. Mm -hmm. But like then you are then starting to put together teams that complement each other. Mm -hmm. So the hybridity is not so much of you, but the kind of the the people that you put together and mm -hmm. the puzzle pieces you put together. What are some of the you know, what are some of the key things that you would do to, to make sure that you put together a team that really work together? You know them really well, or personality, or strength? Like yeah, I think you need to know the skill set. You need to know also personality combination as well. Although we don't have always the luxury to pick all of the people that you want to be because of their abilities, or there's lots of different reasons. But um, luckily, you know, culturally, we are always have great people, not necessarily, you know, I think it all really works well together most of the time, so that part is quite good. Um, so just to kind of knowing the skills, or if you don't know enough, I can ask other people, say, what do you think about, you know, if you're, I'm looking for this, who's the best person uh, within the group? And I get normally a good answer. So luckily I can actually enough to kind of put the right skills together. Always challenging how you're balancing and getting to place you want to go. So obviously just getting a little bit nice, good frame up enough that giving a little room to do a freedom and make something special more than I thought it was going to happen, which is always a success, but also just, you know, have to make sure that we go crazy and end up, you're know, talking about it in must place. So that's the challenge. Yeah. Actually, yeah. But I think there was a question coming from the, Amanda, did you want to ask some Okay, for later. <laughs> okay, go for it. Um, would you say for each of you there's one reoccurring theme or idea that drives your work, whether it be like your interests or your passions or like the skill sets that you're presenting at work? Is there one? Do you see all of these different interests and like these hybrid skill sets coming together, pointing towards one main driver in it? That's a very difficult question. <laughs> distinct 
reasons why a project would be interesting. I mean, one is the subject area, it's like, oh, that company does cool things, or like, that problem is interesting to solve because of what it's about. And then the other one is what you were describing of like, oh, I get to sharpen that knife, or I get to flex that muscle, or I get to like stretch myself in that way. And it's almost like one's uh, interesting for a content reason, and the other's interesting from a, I guess, formal reason, although it's not necessarily like design formal, um, but like the skills used. Um, and I've definitely been on projects where like, the latter has been super interesting and I couldn't care less what the client does. But it's still a really interesting thing to be working on for a while. Um, and I think it, there's a little bit of meaning in both, but they don't have to be both at the same time. Go. I have a question about um, valuing hybrids. I think I feel like it's a double-edged sword to be in an environment that allows you to get your hands on a lot of things, but I personally feel like it ended up being taken advantage of, where then it becomes expected that all of a sudden mm. you're this person, but you can count on me for X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And right. knowing when to push for you know, things like title and financial expansion because of that. And some managers are more tuned into that. Um, but I think that's, as a manager and as someone that is managed, I think it's challenging to know where those boundaries are of creative freedom and then um, sort of false empowerment. So, uh. thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> There's something really interesting about there's like a place culturally valuing hybrids, saying that's great, we want more of that, and encouraging people and people feeling appreciated. But and we talked about this before, but typically the way a company judges its employees is on the value they create within a box. Mm -hmm. Not always, not exclusively, but you know, HR has categories and you have to meet certain things within that category. And there's something really interesting that happens when you move outside of that. There's the like, I've got this down, and I'm perfect at this in every way, plus I do other things. But there's also the like, I actually kind of do these things, and I've just like shifted over a little bit, which leaves a gap over here. Mm -hmm. That means that as you're being judged on just these things, and these things don't matter anymore, that gets weird. And that's kind of a like, actually I'm good at a, a range of things, judge me on the things I'm good at, rather than judge me on just that set. Those are thoughts, not an answer. <laughs> I was looking for thoughts. <laughs> on the on the side of like, I struggle too with you know about people who might take advantage of you know you just do everything for everyone, right? And and there are times that people will tell me like, don't tell people you can do that, and I'm like, oh okay okay. Um, and I think there's also uh, important to know so certain things that you, as you say, is, is like you also like doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think we genuinely have loads of interest, but you can't possibly like everything. Uh, also at that moment, oh, you're just really tired and you want to go home. You know, there are just also time there are human limits to what, how much one can do in 24 hours. And I think sometimes I have to be honest with myself, or I want it like my manager or people that I work with be very honest with me. It's like, you're just really not good at that. Stop doing it. And I think there are things, there, there's beauty in identifying the things that you're not good at. And like, I'm terrible at project managing. So I should never be a project manager slash Strategist. Like that would be the most disastrous job type. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and knowing that having people put me in a position and being a disaster, and then I'm like, okay, I learned from that and be like, okay, closing this box <laughs> and taking this out. And that's also you know a learning process to, to figure out what those things are. Yeah. So so it's it's interesting because um I uh, there was a really great quote at the Guardian, like this um English newspaper from a guy that said, my dad had one job for 20 years. My son will have 20 jobs in a day. <laughs> because of the whole kind of idea of like gig economy and where we're all going. Um, it's, it's kind of like a, it seems like, it seems like a space where, does it allow for more hybrids? And is, is hybridity a key quality for the future? Or is that different? Like the kind of 20 jobs in a day is different than being a hybrid. And if so, like is hybridity like the future in, in what way? 
Too many questions in one. That's a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big one, Mark. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes to all of it. I don't know. I mean, I think it's there's possibly a difference between hybridity and just being flexible. Right. Um, they're obviously related. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between them. I think it's yeah, increasingly necessary yeah. to be flexible. Yeah. Maybe sometimes appreciated to be a hybrid and sometimes useful, but maybe not necessary in quite the yeah. same way. Yeah. So when we mean hybridity, we don't mean flexibility yeah. because you need to make money, which is like one of the things that gig economy is all about. We, you know, it's different than that. Yeah. And I think so hybridity is like good at two things or three. You know, uh, in a way that, that you're really passionate about to use your kind of color metaphors. And I think there's something actually, that what you said in that question, or something in that question, um, <laughs> have a relatedness of like, good enough is really dangerous. Of like, it's you need to be good enough to be useful, and that's great. Mm -hmm. But there's a danger of being good enough for too many things without finding where you're, and I don't think it's finding where you're, special, where you're a specialist, but finding where your center of gravity is. And fi finding one of those, I think, is really valuable. And being good enough at too many things means you end up... Jack of all trades. Jack of all trades. Yeah. 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 So, is it, it, so it's more about deep passion and skill set in like two different skill sets that can be dialed up and down. And do we think that that is the future, or the future is more kind of going for The future is my fail. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the future... Every I, planner has to have a future questions, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think the future is unknown, but I also think that we are getting to a point where there's a lot of interesting mix of industry combining their things who are like, you know, technology and fashion, and those things are, used to be not in the same place, and I think that this is the reason why, you know, hybrid isn't the only future, but I think it's going to become more of a norm that people are, you know, doing different things, we combine different industries and disciplines, and I think, you know, I don't think it's ever going to go out of fashion to be really, really good at one thing. I think we still really need those people okay. that, you know, the person is going to, you know, do the engineering for this building really has to be very good at it so that it will stay <laughs> up, right? But at the same time, um, I think. The, 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 the acceptance or, or the encouragement of being more of a hybrid would be would become more and more common. Um, but I hope that wouldn't get to a tipping point where people would feel weird about being very good at one thing because we need those people as well. Yeah, I mean, I think personally, I actually really admire someone really good at one thing. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, like a baker, he just bake one type of bread all day long and still really finding perfect bread, and I actually rather go to those places to buy those bread rather than there's all different type of kind of bread and then we're selling also something else. And mm -hmm. in a similar thing, I think it's not, I don't know, something about that. You could just focus on one thing and still like making better and better and better that mastering something. It's very attractive because I just don't have that in my you know, personality. Mm -hmm. And I like kind of trying to do sort of different things, like really bored of just one thing focusing on. And then more and more the people becoming hybrid, I just wonder on the other hand, just opposite to that, just those really mastering one thing, uh, other hand becoming more, more important than ever, in a way, because now think about it, there's a really specialty coffee shop, and people actually really focus on coffee, and that's really one thing, rather than you can have a coffee and tea and whatever that is. So I don't know, just wonder if something about just kind of go, if you go one step, if the other opposite is started also becoming Really you need deeper specialists and also lots of generalists to tie it all together. Which the answer is it varies in yes at all. But <laughs> I, think, I think it's I think I mean, we've all kind of touched on that you need both. Right. And I don't think you should ever get rid of both. Maybe the balance shifts back and forth. Yeah. But you need both. We wanted to do an exercise, but you think you had like a couple of questions before we go into that? Yeah,
area and then require the special skill that not that everybody has. That specialist is definitely important. But also, you know, I was client side too, so I have to say, quite often clients are quite lazy as well. You don't want to deal with many agencies, <laughs> so they like to go one place can deliver all different types of things if they are all good at it. So, you know, in a way, I think, you know, as a bigger agency offering a lot of different things, yes, be hybrid and you have a lot of different skills, as definitely a strength. Um, but also, if you really masterize something very special skills or special technology that nobody has, that's actually great things as well. Although technology is constantly changing, so keeping up and you know, be current is definitely a challenge, but at the hand, those are definitely important. So no, just, I think in the end, we can all kind of live together happily. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes, I do agree. Sometimes, you know, clients can be a bit lazy, but they don't want to figure out like, you know, who you are, just want to hire you to get it done. And there's a balance in like, how much do you show the sausage making process? And how much do you, know, do you tell that process story? And I think you know, some places uh, are really good at telling a process story, so then the client buys into the process. And there are certain places that the client really just want to get the result. And I think yeah. it really depends on getting to know them and what they, they want. And I think the hybridity can still be there, but how much do you show it? And how much do you put it into your uh, story to the client, I think it really depends. Mm -hmm. I think um, the general nature of a services-based agency environment is that you have to continuously adapt as well. Like eight years ago, video in-house video production teams were not really a thing. You would always outsource that to like some other production company. Whereas now I'd be surprised if there was any like one agency that didn't have like video production as part of their, part of their core offering. And likewise with mobile development agency that doesn't have like normal development as part of the like broken but you know like part of their offering then what they're doing. So VR might be really hot now and might be something that you outsource, right? But in five to ten years it may be also like part of the core offering. Yeah that is a good um, a good thing to leave you guys with before we do like a final kind of networking exercise is like why are you becoming a right hybrid, right? Are you becoming a hybrid because there's trends and the client is asking for it and you're scared that you're gonna be out of a job if you don't do it? <laughs> or are you a hybrid because you truly love it? Because I think there is a difference there. You know, there's like, there's a photographer friend of mine who was like desperately to kind of try and go into doing VR stuff, but he didn't really love it. So in the end of the day, that is not a real hybrid. You know, like he is the, the, if there is a trend, it has to be a trend that you truly love and want to go towards not and not a trend that you want to become a hybrid and go towards because you're scared that you're going to lose your job that is a different conversation also valid it's a serious problem <laughs> but it's kind of a, a different conversation in like in, in thought to have but we thought that um before we kind of wrap up um uh, we was we were thinking we'd kind of do an exercise with everybody and it might be a conversation piece for a little bit more drinks and networking <laughs> Uh, but um, clearly everybody here mentioned that some, whether it's the education process, the way the universities are organized, or the way the HR and the employers are organized is kind of not really uh, advanced for hybrids. So we thought it would be fun to kind of do an exercise where you kind of think of your true, true hybridity and write a really, a really a new job description. So. You know, like let's imagine a future where you can be, if you really love data, and you're a visual designer, you can be a data artist, for example. So instead of like a visual designer or a data analyst, you know, so the, because the, the, the jobs exist and they are siloed, but let's just for our conversation today, for our networking and more wine drinking, imagine a future <laughs> where you can like write your own job title. What would that be? So. Anything to add, me? No. No. So we're gonna give you like these cards, and, and you can also be very silly about it. Yeah, be silly no, about it. There is no, there is no really right important. or wrong. Uh, and I want you guys to think about. Oh, there is belly here too. Like, uh, I have a card in the already. Uh, if you guys have pen.
to finalize, does anybody want to volunteer their new job description that they came up with? New job description. This table here is really lively. You guys want to go for it? Storytelling strategy, new job description. Yeah. <laughs> Anything from this table here that you want to share with us? The connector. A connector. Maybe there could be a job in the future. Right. Maybe someone could model that. That is interesting. <laughs> Analysis Illustrator. Wow, what is that? What is that?